Act 1, Scene 1, Venice, A Street. Enter Rodrigo and Iago. Tosh, never tell me. I take it much unkindly that thou, Iago, who hast had my purse, as if the strings were thine, shouldest know of this. Sublide, but you will not hear me. If I ever I did dream of such a matter, abhor me. Thou stoldest me, thou didst hold him in thy aid. Despise me, if I do not. Three great ones of the city, and Prosodus soon to make me his lieutenant. Of cap to him, and by the faith of man, I know my price. I am worth no worse a place. But he, as loving his own pride and purposes, evades them with bombast circumstance, horribly stuffed with epithets of war, and in conclusion, none suits my mediators, for certes, says he, I have already chose my officer, and what was he? Forsooth, a great arithmetician, one Michael Cassio, a Florentian, a fellow almost damned in a fair wife, that never set a squadron in the field, nor the division of a battle knows, more than a spinster, unless the bookish theoric, wherein the toad consuls can propose, as masterly as he, mere prattle without practice. And all his shouldership, but he, sir, had the election, and I, of whom his eyes had seen the proof, at Rhodes, at Cyprus, and on other grounds, Christian and heathen, must be believed and calmed by debitor and creditor, this countercaster. Hey, in good time, must his lieutenant be, and I, God bless the mark, his moorship's agent. By heaven, I would rather. Have been his hagman. Why, there's no remedy. Tis the curse of service. Preferment goes by letter and affection, and not by old gradation, where each second stood heir to the first. Now, sir, be judge yourself, whether I any just term and am bind to love the more. I would not follow him, then. Oh, sir, content you. I follow him to serve my turn upon him. We cannot all be masters, nor all masters can be truly followed. You shall mark many a duchess and knee crooking knave, that, doting on his own obsequious bondage, wears out his time, much like his master's ass, for naught but provender, when he's old, cashiered with me such honest knaves. Others there are who, trimmed in forms and visage of duty, Keep yet their hearts attending on themselves, and throwing but shows of service on their lords. Do well thrive by them, and when they have lined their coats, do themselves homage. These fellows have some soul, and such a one do I profess myself. For, sir, it is as sure as you are Rodrigo, where I the more, I would not be Iago. In following him, I follow but myself. Heaven is my judge. Not die for love and duty, but seeming so for my peculiar end. For when my outward action doth demonstrate the native act and figure of my heart, in compliment extern, tis not long after, but I will wear my heart upon my sleeve. For does to peck at, I am not what I am. What the fool fortune does the thick lips owe if he can't carry thus? Call up her father, rouse him, make after him, poison his delight, proclaim him in the streets, and sense her kinsmen, and, though he in fertile climate dwell, plague him with flies, though that be his joy be joy, yet throw such changes of vexation on't, as it may lose some color. Here is her father's house, I'll call aloud. Do, with the timorous accent. And die a yell, as when by night and negligence the fire is spied in popular cities. What ho, Brabanto! Signor Brabantio! Ho! Wake! What ho, Brabantio! Thieves, thieves, thieves! Look to your house! Your daughter and your bags! Thieves, thieves! Brabantio appears above, at a window. What is the reason of this terrible summons? What is the matter there? Signor, is all your family within? 
Are your doors locked? Why? Wherefore I ask you this? Sounds, sir. You're robbed. For shame, put on your gown. Your heart is burst. You've lost half your soul. Even now, now, very now, an old black ram is topping your white ewe. Arise, arise, awake the snorting citizens with the bell, or else the devil will make a grandsire of you. Arise, I say. What? Have you lost your wits? Most revered, Signor. Do you know my voice? Not, I what you are. My name is Rodrigo. The worst so welcome. I have charged thee not to haunt my doors. In honest plainness, thou hast heard me say, my daughter is not for thee. And now, in madness, being full of supper, and distempering draughts, upon malicious bravery, dost thou come to start my quiet. But, sir, 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 but thou must needs be sure, my spirit and my place have in them power to make this bitter to thee. Patience, good sir. What tellest thou of me, Robin? This is Venice. My house is not the Grange. Most grave Barbindio, and simple and pure soul, I come to you. Sound, sir, you are one of those that will not serve God, if the devil bid you. Because we come to do you service, and you think we ruffians, you'll have your daughter coward with a Barbary horse. You'll have your nephews nay to you. You'll have your courtiers for cousins, and gannets for yeomans. What profane wretch art thou? I am one, sir, that comes to tell you your daughter, and the moor are now making the beast with two backs. Thou art a villain. You are a sentinel. This thou shalt answer. I know thee, Rodrigo. Sir, I will answer anything, but I beseech you, if it be your pleasure and most wise consent, as partly I find this, that your fair daughter... At this odd even and dull watch of the night, transported with no worse nor better guard, but with a knave of common eye, a gondolier, to the gross class, a lovicious moor, if this be known to you and your allowance, we then have you done bold and saucy wrongs. But if you know not this, my manners tell me, we have your wrong rebuke. Do not believe that. From the sense of all civility. I thus would play and trifle with your reverence. Your daughter, if you have not given her leave, I say again, hath made a grace revolt, trying her duty, beauty, wit, and fortunes, in an extravagant and wheeling stranger, of here and everywhere. Straight satisfy yourself. If she be in her chamber or your house, let me unloose the justice of the state for thus deluding you. Strike on the tinder, ho. Give me a taper. Call up all my people. This accident is not unlike my dream. Belief in it oppresses me already. Light, I say. Light. X is above. Farewell, for I must leave you. It seems not met nor wholesome to my place. To be reduced as, if I stay, I shall. Against them all, for I do not the state. However... This may gall him with some check. Cannot with safety cast him, for he embarked with such loud reason to the Cyprus wars, which even now stand in act, that for the souls another of his fathom they have none, to lead the business in much regard. Though I do not hate him, though I do hate him, I do help plainness. Yet for necessity, of present life, I must show out of a flag and sign of love, which is indeed but sign that you shall surely find him. Lead to Sagittary, that raise such, and there will be with him. So farewell. Exit. Enter below. Repantio, and servants with torches. It is too true and evil. Gone she is. And what's the calm of my despised time? It's not but bitterness. Now, Rodrigo, where didst thou see her? O oh, unhappy girl, with the moor, sayest thou. Who would be her father? How didst thou know t'was she? Oh, she deceives me. Past thought. What she said to you, 
Give more tapers. Raise all my kindred. Are they married, think you? Truly, I think they are. O oh, heaven, how got she out? O oh, treason of the blood! Fathers from hence trust not her, your daughters' minds, but what you see them at. Is there not charms by which the property of youth and maidhood may be abused? Have you not read, Rodrigo, of some such thing? Yes, I, yes, sir, I have, indeed. Call it my brother. Oh, would you have had her? Some one way, some another. Do you know where we may apprehend her and the more? I think I can discover him, if you please. Do get good guard and go along with me. Pray you. Lead on. At every house I'll call. I may command at most. Get weapons, ho! And raise some special officers of night. On good, Rodrigo. I'll deserve your pains. Exunt. Uh, and that's the end of, of uh, Act 1, Scene 1.